God is said. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Bible study will do good in every life. In your own life in particular, it will do good in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for these reaching words. And thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ, the living word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that comes to breathe upon your word and to enlighten us as to where our strength is. We ask you, O Lord, that tonight you do good in every life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that every cobweb of the evil one you sweep away from every life in Jesus' name. Energize us, empower us, so that we can in turn go to do good in other people's lives. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, We're still studying from Mark chapter 1. And tonight we're looking at Mark chapter 1. Verse 29 to verse 39. Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 29. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew, with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And she he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her and she ministered unto them. And at evening, when the sun was set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many that were sick of diverse different diseases, and cast out many devils, and suffered not permitted, and allowed not the devils to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out, and departed into a solitary place, and there prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Verse 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Tonight, that is what we are looking at. And you will see quite a lot concerning the healing ministry of Jesus and concerning the power that delivers and the power that casts out devils. But tonight, we are looking at the power of Christ, and we're looking at the response of the people that he manifested his power on. So tonight, the message is the responsive ministries of the beneficiaries of Christ's healing. There's Christ's healing. They came from everywhere. He healed them all. And those who are possessed with devils, he set them free. And he has the same power today. He is able to heal. He is able to deliver. And he will set everyone free in Jesus' name. And then we're looking at the beneficiaries. That is the people who benefited from the ministry of Jesus Christ. Whether it's in the home, on the street, in the synagogue, anywhere. Those beneficiaries, what did they do? to become beneficiaries of the power of Christ. What did they do to become the beneficiaries of the great manifestation of the power of the Lord? And after that, we're looking at the ministries of these beneficiaries themselves. How did they relate with Christ? 
How did they respond to Christ? How did they reciprocate the love of Christ unto them? They didn't just receive and then they said, Bye bye, Christ. Thank you. When I have another problem, I'll come back again. They did something that showed their appreciation. They did something that showed that they were responding as beneficiaries of Christ's power to heal. That's what we're talking about tonight. The responsive ministries of the beneficiaries of Christ's healing. Three things we're looking at. Number one, personal ministry to Christ in Peter's home. The first section of the passage we read, he went to Peter's home. And then the mother of the wife, that is the mother-in-law to Peter, was sick of fever. And they came to tell him, they didn't just say, he will know, he will see her by himself. When you have a problem, you must tell the Lord. They told the Lord and he healed her. And then you see the response of uh, Peter's wife, the last line of verse 31. After that healing, she ministered unto them. She ministered unto them. She wasn't going to use the strength she got eh, for herself or for society alone or for Satan ministered unto Christ and unto the followers of Christ. Number one, personal ministry to Christ in Peter's home. Point number two, the powerful manifestation by Christ of the promised healing. Actually, the healing had been promised back in the Old Testament, and Jesus came now to fulfill all those promises of healing, and he manifested the power in line with the word that had been written before he came, the powerful manifestation by Christ of the promised healing. Point number three, the practical model of Christ in progressive harvesting, progressive as harvesting. They wanted him to stay in one place. And he said, stay here. Many people are asking of you and they're seeking you. And he said, no, we must go to the next towns. That's progressive. We've done something here. We go to the next place and we do something similar. There are people in need here and they are being attended to. There are people outside in other places and they need to be attended to. We need to progress in the harvesting of souls into the kingdom. I will say the practical model of the Lord Jesus Christ. Point number three, the practical model of Christ in progressive harvesting. Let's come to number one. I'm reading from verse 29 again to verse 31. Here we have the personal ministry to Christ in Peter's home. Look at verse 29. It says, And fourth ways, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the home of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately, somebody tell me immediately. That's how it will happen in your life. And immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto her. As you look at this, number one, you will see the astonishing miracle of Christ. Astonishing miracle of Christ. It was um, told him that Simon's uh, mother-in-law had fever. Let's come to Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 14. You'll see that Matthew recorded the same thing. And the reason why we read all these uh, parallel passages is so that you'll see the details of what actually happened. Mark, Mark might just say, the Lord took her by the hand and then the fever left her. Let's see what the other people said. All the other evangelists, Matthew chapter 8 and verse 14. And when Jesus was come to Peter's house, 
the same record he saw his mother's uh, mother's uh, his wife's uh, mother lay and sick of a fever and he touched her it's not just uh, you know pulling her up touch her the touch of jesus transmits power transmits virtue and that touch will come upon your life he touched her he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them now that's the record of matthew we're going to look at luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 uh, you understand that luke was a physician and as a physician he now gives us some details about the healing of this feverish mother-in-law and gave us the deliverance from that fever it's telling us in Luke chapter 8, chapter 4, and verse 38. Verse 38, and he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. I just look the physician. It's telling us it's not just fever. He's seen a people that had fever before. And this one is a great fever. And look at what happened. And they besought him for her. And they besought him for her. There are times when the people who are sick themselves, they do not have the strength, they do not have the voice, or they do not have the ability to call upon the Lord. And we can help them. They besought the Lord for her. Look at this. And he stood over her. Look at that, stood over her. The way you stand can tell whether you have confidence or not, or whether you are fearful. The way you stand can tell whether you are assured that whatever you say now, the way you stand in authority, and the way you stand with power, and the way you stand with assurance can tell what you are going to do. Or you can stand in a, a way that people will say, uh, why am I here? What am I doing here? What is going to happen now? Look at the condition of this woman. She stood over her and rebuked the fever. Look at that. And rebuked the fever. You see, all the people, all they recorded is that, you know, he touched her. He lifted up her hand. He rebuked her. Now, you need, he rebuked the fever. You need to think about something now. When Jesus rebuked the fever, for example, you cannot rebuke a chair that doesn't have life doesn't have any power, doesn't have any will, doesn't have any volition. You cannot rebuke an object, an inanimate object. You can only rebuke something you know, that has a spirit behind it, life behind it, that has some will behind it. The fever Jesus recognized. This is not just ordinary fever. There's a personality behind this. And he rebuked that personality behind the fever. Rebuked the fever. And it left her. It left her. Now the chair cannot leave. The inanimate object cannot leave. But it left her. Whatever was behind that fever, everything left. And whatever is behind your problem, whatever is behind your mountain, that thing would leave. And then it says in that verse 39, And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Was that the only case of fever that Jesus dealt with? Come to John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 46. John chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 46. It says, So Jesus came into Cana of Galilee, where he had made what the water wine. And there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at, at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he, came, he went unto him and besought him that he will come down and heal his son. You see here the father asking that Christ will come and heal the son. For he was 
at the point of death. We're going to discover the sickness of this son was fever. So when somebody has fever, you cannot say ordinary fever. Just drink uh, warm water and you'll be all right. Ordinary fever, just cover yourself and you'll be all right. Ordinary fever, just rub ointment and then have a blanket to curb yourself. You'll be all right. Sometimes fever can be terrible and fever can be dangerous and fever can affect every other part of the body. The son was at the point of death and then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The noble man says unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Just fever. I'll show you now that it was fever. And he said, My son is at the point of dying. That fever will not kill you. They call it typhoon. You know, sometimes you go to uh, the hospital, you check up, you say, what's wrong with me? And they say, typhoid fever. You go to another place, typhoid fever, but that typhoid fever will vanish away. Jesus says unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. Look at that. Go thy way, thy son liveth. In this place now, he didn't rebuke the fever. In this place now, it is okay, take me to your house, I need to touch that son. Take me to your house, I need to lift up that son. Jesus has many methods. And don't be looking at one direction that they will rebuke the fever, or they will touch me, or they will lift me up. Just go home and your son leaves. And I tell you tonight, go home, your problems are solved. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And as he was, and he was now going down, his servants met him, met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. What did Jesus tell him before this time? Thy son liveth. And what did the servants, what did they tell him? Thy son liveth. What you see after this Bible study will be exactly what you have heard at the Bible study. Your testimony will match the declaration of the teaching of the Word of God in Jesus' name. Look at verse 52. Then inquired he of them the hour he began to amend. He thought it would be, you know, something gradual. He began to amend. He had not understood. He had not listened to Mark saying immediately, straightway, instantaneously, at that same hour, at that same moment, the fever left him. But look at this now. They said unto him, yesterday at the seventh hour, Yesterday at the seventh hour, yesterday at your seventh hour, the fever left him. It was fever. The fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. You see them. Instead of saying, okay, that's very good, that's wonderful, I, I praise God for that, and then go his way, he said, I must believe on him. The father, the son, the whole family, the whole house, believed on him. Let's come back to Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 31. What we have looked at now is the astonishing ministry of Christ. Now we're looking at the appreciable ministry to Christ. Appreciative, appreciative ministry to Christ. What's going to be the result? What's going to be the reaction? What's going to be uh, the response of the people that were healed? Look at the last line of chapter 1, verse 31. And she ministered unto them. And she ministered unto them. That tells us then the appreciative ministry. When God has done something for you, when Christ has done something for you, you must minister back to Christ, minister back to God, because you appreciate what the Lord has done. Let's come to Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. 
And it came to pass afterward that he went through out every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Look at this. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others. What did they do? They ministered unto him of their substance. He had delivered them. He had healed them. He had set them free. He had liberated them. And he, they didn't just say, well, that's him, that's Christ, that's God. He created us. He redeemed us. He saved us. Thank you very much. And then they did nothing. No. They ministered unto him of their substance. And that's what we ought to do as we see what the Lord has done for us. Then we minister unto the Lord. Let's come to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 28. As it was at the time when Christ was still alive, so it was after Christ had gone to heaven. We're coming to Acts, chapter 28, and I read from verse 8. Acts, chapter 28, verse 8. And it came to pass that the father of Publius Let's seek of a fever. You see that? Let's seek of a fever. At the time of Christ, when people had fever, he healed them. He delivered them. He set them free. Now Christ had gone to heaven, but he had given the power to his apostles and disciples. And here we're told that somebody, Publius, was uh, sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in, and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. This was after the cross. This after the resurrection. This after Pentecost. And this like today, after Christ had gone to heaven. And if you have any fever there, any kind of a flowing blood that there, you are healed in Jesus' name. Any other challenge you have, the name of Jesus is a mighty powerful name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Look at verse 9. So, when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and they were healed. Others also, like you. Others also, like me. Others also, like all of us, will be healed in Jesus' name. But you know what we're talking about? In this uh, part 2 of uh, point 1, the appreciative ministry to Christ. After they were healed, what he did do, look at verse 10. Who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. You see, even in the gentle world, they didn't just uh, fold their hands. You know, he has healed us, that Paul, what a great power of God he has. That Paul, what a great apostle, and now we are healed. And then that was the final thing. They laid on us many things that we needed, that they saw were necessary. Number one, the astonishing miracle of Christ. Number two, the appreciative ministry to Christ. But you know, it's not only human beings that minister to Christ, even angels minister to Christ. And so, if you don't do your part, if I don't do my part, angels will do it. I pray that nobody will take your place. Number three, angels ministry to Christ. Angels ministry to Christ. Men ministered unto him. Women ministered unto him. Angels also ministered unto him. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 11. Matthew chapter 4, reading from verse 11. Then the devil left, uh, leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. He didn't, like, he didn't lack ministry. A men ministered, women ministered, and where human beings could not minister, angels were at hand to minister. 
the angel's ministry unto Christ. We're looking at Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. I read from verse 41. Luke chapter 22, verse 41. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling, falling down to the ground. And when he, when he rose up from the prayer and was come to his disciples, he found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said unto them, Why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye fall, lest ye enter into temptation. You see, where they could not help, where human beings could not minister, angels were at hand. Come back now to verse 41. Those disciples could not help. Those disciples uh, could not uh, minister to him, uh, even though he said, come, come. Because it was so heavy and so sorrowful, and pray along with me. They couldn't, when men fail you, angels will come and assist you. And when men and women fail to come and minister to you, angels will come to minister to you in Jesus' name. I'm looking at uh, verse 41 now. And it was withdrawn from them about his stones cast, and kneeled down and prayed, and saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. There appeared an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And when you lack the help, the assistance, and the encouragement, and the ministry of men and women around you, angels will come to minister to you. You didn't accept that one. Did you believe that one? Look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14. It says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who are the heirs of salvation? It's talking about angels. Verse 13, To which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits? You might not see them, they will minister to you. You might not see them, they will conquer your enemies. You might not see them, they will strengthen and encourage you. You might not see them, you will experience empowerment through their ministration in Jesus' name. They are sent to minister to them that shall be heirs of salvation. We come to point number two now. The powerful manifestation of Christ of the promised healing. We're coming to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. I read from verse 32. Mark chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 32. And at evening, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that had that were possessed with devils. You see, Jesus could not go to all their houses, but they brought unto him, they brought unto him all that were diseased. That is, the people that had disease. They had discomfort, and they had suffering. They had sickness, and them that were possessed with devils. They brought unto him and they were told and all the city was gathered together at the door at the door is the door of a house or the door of a sanctuary like this we're going to have a power night next week Thursday will you be there but you know there are many people, the, the one we had last time, maybe you came, but you came alone. But all these people, those who could not come by themselves, they brought them. The blind, the deaf, the dumb, and the paralytic, everyone having problems. And the people that had challenges of evil spirits, they brought them. Don't come alone, bring the people, you will see miracles. 
I will see miracle. Your relatives bring them, your friends bring them, everyone bring them, and God is going to visit us, and He will and surprise you with your own package of miracles in Jesus' name. Then it says in verse 34, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases. He healed many. Has God changed? I said, has God changed? As Jesus, our Savior, Redeemer, Healer, Deliverer, has he changed? No, he healed many. He's going to heal many even from today in Jesus' name. And cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Because they knew him. You see here, if you come to Matthew, let's come to Matthew chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, we're looking at verse 16. And when the even was come, evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed how many people? If you are there, I said how many people? He healed all that was sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. There are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the prophecy of healing. The prophecy that it might be fulfilled. You see, when you come, there is the prophecy of the word of God. And that prophecy must be fulfilled in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. Number one, the prophecy of healing. Number two, the power for healing. The power for healing. Number three, the plurality of healing. The plurality of healing. Number one is the prophecy of healing. Already you find that in verse 17 there, that it may be fulfilled, which was spoken by Zias the prophet, saying himself, himself, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. What do you find the prophecy Isaiah chapter 53? Isaiah chapter 53. We're looking at verses 4 and 5. Isaiah chapter 53. We're looking at verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He's talking about his betrayer. He's talking about his revealed stripes. He's talking about all the lashes they, put, they will put on him when he comes. And then he tells us he was meeting of God. He was afflicted. He was stricken. But why? Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Because of our sin, so we can have forgiveness and have salvation. That's why he went through all that. He was bruised for our iniquities. And then it says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Tell me the rest over there. Say it again. Make it personal. I. And with the stripes, I am healed. That's the prophecy. It will be fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. And after Christ went to heaven, the prophecy was still going to be fulfilled, was to go on being fulfilled and fulfilled and fulfilled in every generation. In First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. So you cannot say, okay, it has been fulfilled. It will never happen again. It's going to happen in your life. It says in First Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 21. For even here unto what ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, Neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. And when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Look at verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree 
that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. Tell me what you see there now. By whose stripes ye were healed. Number one, the prophecy of healing. Number two, the power for healing. The power for healing. All that Jesus did when he was on earth, healing them, delivering them, setting them free, liberating them, is summarized in Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, reading from verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, our power. is the power of the Holy Ghost, the power for healing. With the Holy Ghost, our power, who went about doing good and healing, how many people? Are you part of this? I said, are we all part of this? Healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He will heal you. Matthew chapter 15, we're looking at verse 13. Matthew chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 13. Here it tells us in uh, Matthew 15, verse 13, and great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. And he healed them. It's so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, and the lame to walk, and the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. They glorified the God of Israel. Look at the power. We're looking at uh, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, uh, I'm reading from verse 15. Luke chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 15. It says, but so much the more. Went there, a fame, a fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Number one, they came to hear the word of God. The word that brings salvation. The word that brings peace with God. And the word that brings transformation in their lives. They came to hear and then to be healed of their infirmities. Verse 16. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And somebody there tell me. Tell me with the preacher's voice. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Is that power present here today? It will touch your life. Number one, the prophecy of healing. Number two, the power for healing. Number three now, the plurality of healing. Many times when we hear about the healing and power of Christ, we say, but I am not sick. Because we do not understand there's the plurality of healing. Come to Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 18. Luke chapter 4. Verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. The broken hearted. Not broken bones, not a diseased flesh, not pain or plague in your body, but the heart that is broken. That one also needs healing. When there's sorrow, when you are overwhelmed, when it appears tears are flowing and will not come to an end because your heart is broken. And event something has happened that broke your heart. Something has happened that caused a kind of sorrow that nobody can comfort you. But it will heal your broken heart. 
and to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. You are bruised by the hand of the enemy, it will set you at liberty. Psalm 41, the plurality of healing. Psalm 41, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 41, verse 4. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Heal my soul. You see that? There's healing for the soul. If your soul is weak, if your soul has been discouraged, why are you cast down, O my soul? Hope in the Lord. If you appear hopeless, your soul needs healing. It's not only those who are blind. It's not only those who are deaf. It's not only those who have any pain or plague in their body. If the soul is having pressure, if the soul is having a kind of body that nobody can help you lift up, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. If the guilt and the condemnation is so overwhelming that you don't know what you are going to do. You turn here, you turn there, and there's guilt, there's condemnation. It will heal your soul. Look at Psalm 147. I'm reading from verse 3. The plurality of healing. Many kinds of healing for the body, for the soul, for your spirit. Many kinds of healing. The plurality of healing. Psalm 147. I'm reading from verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. When you have been wounded and when it appears the enemy has thrown an arrow at your heart, you are not expecting that. How did this come? How could this have come? And then it came to you and it's like, I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm at a crossroad and this problem is overwhelming and it's going to draw me. You will come out of it in Jesus' name. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their name. Great is our Lord. Lord, and of great power and his understanding is infinite. Did anybody say amen there? Amen. And we're looking at uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4, we're looking at verse 20. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Now it comes to the flesh, and it says it's also health to the flesh. Jeremiah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 3, the plurality of healing. Jeremiah chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 22. It says, return, ye backslide, backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. I will heal your backsliding. You know, sometimes the habit of going astray and the habit of going into the wilderness of sin and the habit it happened before, it happens again and happens again, it becomes like a deadly disease. And it says, I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. The powerful manifestation by Christ of the promised healing, the promise of healing, the prophecy of healing, the power for healing, and the plurality of healing. We're coming back to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 35 now. Mark chapter 1, we're looking at verse 35. And in the morning rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him, and when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. And he said unto them, Let us go go into the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. And he preached in their synagogues 
throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. The practical model of Christ in progressive harvesting. He was harvesting the souls into the kingdom. And then he was progressing from one place to the other, covering all these villages, all these towns, and all these cities. And when people wanted to tie him down, to say, stay here with us. We need you so much. Don't go to any other place. He said, we must go to the next towns. And you'll go to the next level in your spiritual life in Jesus' name. In your family, you'll get to the next level. In your profession, you'll get to the next level. In your understanding, your spiritual life, you'll get to the next level in Jesus' name. A great, great amen. There are three things we'll see in this section. Number one, the prayer model of the master. The prayer model of the master. Look at verse 35. And in the morning rising up, a great while before day is a model for you. It's a model for me. If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, if Jesus Christ, the very power of God in man, if Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, if he would pray and still depend on the power of the Father, no doubt you and I will need to spend time in prayer at a time, in a period of the day when there will be no disturbance, at a period of the day when disturbances will not come, in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and he departed into a solitary place and there he prayed that's the model that's what he always did and he's telling us that's what we should always do we're looking at some five and verse three some five we're reading from verse three he prayed early in the morning a challenge for you an encouragement for you and a model for every one of us in Psalm 5 verse 3 my voice shall thou hear in the morning my voice shall thou hear in the morning O Lord in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up I will look up before you face the challenges of the day and before those abilities come to you Early in the morning, spend time with the Lord and pray. We're looking at Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, I read from verse 12. Luke chapter 6, we're reading from verse 12. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray. He went out into a mountain, not because there's anything special about mountain, but because that was where he could have some solitude, some quietness, and some freedom. So the people, you know, people come to knock at the door, or people say, you know, people are asking of you. But now he went to a place where they will not discover he was, and he continued all night in prayer to God. He continued all night in prayer to God. Why? Look at verse 13. And when it was day, he called unto him his, his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he named apostles. He was going to take a great decision. And he was going to pick 12 people among those disciples that will become apostles. And if, when you're taking a great decision and you're making a great choice, it may be in the area of where do you go to live? It may be in the area of what work are you going to do? It may be in the area of who is going to be a partner to you in business. It may be in the area of marriage. It may be in the area of should I travel out or should I stay? Shall I stay in the country or go to show another country any time you want to take an important decision you need to wait on the lord and that's what jesus did he prayed and he has also told us that we too should engage in prayer in luke chapter 18 luke chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 1 and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray 
many challenges, men ought always to pray. Many crossroads, men ought always to pray. Many unresolved problems, men ought always to pray and not to faith. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming, continual coming, continual coming. I prayed yesterday morning, this morning too you must pray, and tomorrow morning too you must pray, continual coming. And if you have brought that problem to the Lord, and it has not been solved yet, he wants to see how persistent you are, how persevering you are, by her continual coming, you know, lest she weary me. And the Lord said, here watch the unjust judge save, shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, his own elect, his own children, his own disciples, his own followers, that cry to him day and night, though he be long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. He will avenge you speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth, he will find faith in me. He will find faith in you. He will find faith in us in Jesus' name. Look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Don't give up on that problem. The Lord will answer your prayer. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious about nothing. Be worried about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, no, no more complaints, only prayer. No more murmuring, only prayer. No more crying, only prayer. No more regrets, only prayer. Any amen on the, in the house? It says, by prayer supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto god and the peace of god which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and might through christ jesus once you are preached be at rest once you are the table leech before the lord be at rest nothing will happen that will destroy your life Nothing will happen that will destroy your family. Nothing will happen that will destroy the project of your life in Jesus' name. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't think on the problems. Think on these things. Don't think on the pressure of the world, on the lies and deception of the world, and the threatenings from the world. But think on the word of God and those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Number one there. The prayer model of the master. Let's come back to Mark chapter 1. Number 2 here. The purposeful moves of the master. The purposeful moves moving from one place to the other. Purposeful moves of the master. And he moved with purpose. He had something in mind. He had something to do. And because of that he said, we're going to move. We're moving from this house to that house. Purposeful. We're moving from this village to that village, purposeful. We're moving from this local church to that local church. It's a purposeful move. We're coming to Mark chapter 1, reading from verse 42. Mark chapter 1, 
I'm reading here from, sorry, from verse 36. Verse 36, and Simon, and they that were with him followed after him, and when they had found him, they searched unto him, all men seek for thee. And he said unto them, let us go, let us move into the next towns, that I may preach there also, purposeful, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. That's why I came. That's why I'm here. I'm not supposed to be st stagnant. I'm not supposed to be stationary. I'm not supposed to stay in one place but to move and to move and to move because that is why he came. And you will move on. You will move higher. You will move further. You will not be stagnant. You will not stay in one place in any area of your life in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 42. Luke chapter 4, we're, looking, we're reading from verse 42. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desert place, and the people sought him. And they came unto him, and they stayed him. They stayed him. They stopped him, that he should not depart from them. And he said unto them, I must preach. The kingdom of God to other cities also. I cannot stay in one place. I must not abide only with you. I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. For therefore I am saint. Therefore am I saint. You must know why you are saint. Why you are here. Why you are here on earth. And I pray you will not forget in Jesus' name. Some people had been saved. Some people had been healed. Some people had been delivered where he ministered. But now he must move on because there were other people that needed that same salvation and that same healing and that same deliverance. In First Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 3. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. For this is good. And acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. And all those men are not in one city, they're in different cities, who will have all men to be saved. All those men, all those people were not in the same local assembly. And because many of them are in other places, that's why he must move on. And that's why we must move on. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 9. It tells us in verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any shall perish. Not willing that any shall perish. That's why he had to go to the next towns. He had to go to the next place so that the people will have the opportunity of hearing, but that all should come to repentance. He had preached repentance in one place, but now he must go to another place purposefully so that others will come to repentance. We're coming back to Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 39. Mark chapter 1, verse 39. And he preached in their synagogues throughout throw out, throw out all Galilee and cast out devils. Number one, the prayer model of the master. Number two, the purposeful moves of the master. Number three now, the practical mandate from the master. The practical mandate from the master. You know what he did? He went through all the synagogues, throw out all Galilee without leaving any part untouched, without leaving any place uh, without, uh, without the gospel. And that's the mandate he has given to his disciples too. That's the mandate he has given to us too, that we go throughout Galilee, through, go throughout our region, go throughout our local 
local government, go through out every state and go through out every nation and preach the gospel. We're looking at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 6. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as she go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. As she go, not as she stay in one place. As she go, as she go, as she go, you preach, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. That's the mandate. Cleanse the lepers. That's the mandate. Raise the dead. That's the mandate. Cast out devils. Freely ye have received and freely give. You will do it. And God will walk through you. The power of the Holy Ghost will walk through you. We're coming to Matthew chapter 24. What you if it's a dangerous time. It's a difficult time. What if there is disturbance in the land? Can we still go or do we have to stay inside a locked house so that we can protect ourselves? He went through out all the synagogues and through out Galilee. He went through everywhere. But now look at our condition and look at the condition of our country and the condition of our area where we're living. Come to Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 4. Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You will not be deceived. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass but the time, but the end uh, is not yet. You'll hear of wars and rumors of wars, of commotion, of conflict, of debate, of disagreement on the streets, in the town, in the local government, in a particular state, up there, down here, everywhere. But it says all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows, and then shall they deliver you to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, tell me, tell me, the same shall be saved. Now, verse 14, with all the commotion, with all the conflict, and with all the rumors of war, and with all the disturbances, and with everything that we're hearing, news over there, something happened. News over there, something happened. Look at what Jesus said. In the midst of it all, what we should keep on doing, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, throughout the world, throughout your state, and throughout your region, and throughout your community, and throughout your local government. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto them, and then shall the end come. We'll keep on doing what he has told us to do, and nothing will touch your life. And nothing will disturb your life. You will not be afraid. I said you will not be afraid. The Lord will walk with you. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Look at the power that will follow you. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. That's what he said. He said, I did it that way. I went through out all the towns, all the villages, all the communities in Galilee and everywhere, Capernaum. I went through everywhere and I pass it on to you. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
many people are going to get saved through you. But he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Them that believe. Them that believe. Any believer here tonight? Them that believe. I said any believer here tonight? Them that believe. The signs will follow you. You must see your own sign. I will see my own sign. The signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. If you are going to do it, say good day, amen. They shall speak with new tongues. If you are going to do that, say good amen. amen. They shall take off serpents, another amen. amen. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Amen. Nobody will kill you with poison. Nobody will kill you with charm. Nobody will kill you with occultic power. He says if they drink any deadly sin accidentally, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. What are those anointed hands? This hand must bring healing to somebody. Somebody in your home. Somebody in your community. Somebody somewhere. This hand must be anointed. And this hand must bring healing to somebody in Jesus' name. So then, after that the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and they preached in a local place. And they preached only in one place. Tell me now. Tell me where you are going to preach. And they went forth and preached everywhere. And it says, the Lord walking with them. The Lord walking with you. The Lord walking with all of us. And confirming the word was signs following. And the whole church said, Let that amen be fulfilled in your life. Let's rise up now. Let's rise up now. You see what the Lord has taught us today. We have the personal ministry to Christ in Peter's home. In your home, minister to Christ. Minister to Christ. He has blessed you. Minister back to Christ. He has healed you. Minister back to Christ. He has delivered you. Minister back to Christ. Tell the Lord, I'm going to show my love. I'm going to show my appreciation. You have astonishing power to heal. Oh Lord, touch me today. Oh Lord, heal me today. Oh Lord, deliver me today. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let his hand touch you. Let his power touch you. And then after that, appreciate what the Lord has done and pay back your vow and pay back your pledge and pay back in consecration. Oh Lord, you have touched me. I'm going to touch another person. Oh Lord, you have healed me i'm going to minister to another person on your behalf let there be appreciative ministry to christ the lord has saved you what shall, what will you give to the lord the lord has delivered you what are you going to give unto the lord the lord has blessed you one way or the other are you not to, going to give something back to the lord of your strength of your substance of your skill, of everything you have, and offer it back to the Lord cheerfully. Offer it back to the Lord happily. Offer it back to the Lord with all your heart, with gratitude coming from you. And then remember the angels' ministry. Angels minister to Christ. If you don't do it, angels will do it, but you'll do it. You'll do it. You will do it. And angels will minister unto you. And when you're at a crossroad, angels will minister to you. When you have a problem and there's nobody to help, angels will minister unto you. Their ministry spirits, they are sent forth to minister to them who are the heirs of salvation. Welcome the ministry of angels in your life when you are asleep, when you are awake. When you have difficulty, when you have challenges, when you don't know the way out, the angels of the Lord surround them that fear the Lord as the mountains surround Jerusalem. They will minister unto you. Christ ministers unto you with a sealing power, astonishing miracle. 
and then you minister back unto the Lord as you touch the lives of the children of God. As you have done it to them, you have done it also unto me. And let the angels minister unto you. Accept, believe that all the power of the Lord is available for you and great ministry will come to you from heaven. And then the manifestation of healing. You are sick, there's a prophecy of healing. And your fellow brother, sister is sick, there's a prophecy of healing. By stripes we're healed. By stripes I am healed. By stripes our neighbors are healed, go to them. And your son, your daughter healed, go to them. Your wife healed, lay hands on her. Your husband healed, lay hands on him. The prophecy will be fulfilled. Remember the power of healing. He has the power, the power to heal, the power to deliver. And every time we come in this presence, there's the power of the Lord to heal. And the power is here tonight. And the power will touch you tonight. The power of the Lord to heal. Remember, there's a plurality of healing. It'll heal your mind. It'll heal your brain. It'll heal your nerves. It'll heal you psychologically. It'll heal you physically. It'll heal you spiritually. It will heal everything that is disease all around you. There's a plurality of healing. Claim his promise. His healing is not limited to just this or that. You have a broken heart, he'll heal you. You have a sorrowful soul, he'll heal you. You have a doubtful mind, he'll heal you. You have a habit of backsliding, he will heal you of that habit of backsliding. You have any broken bone, he'll heal you. You have any wounds incurable, it's always there. I'm always feeling the pain there. And the doctors say they cannot see anything. Plurality of healing, it will heal you. And it's giving us a model. The model of praying. 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 Pray like Christ. Early in the morning, when there's no disturbance, you find a quiet place in your house, a quiet place in the place where you live. And pray. Don't say I'm in a hurry to go for morning cry. Pray. I'm in a hurry to catch my boss. Pray. I'm in a hurry to get out of the community. Otherwise, there will be hold up. Pray. I'm in a hurry to get to the market. Otherwise, I might lose my customers. Pray. Follow the model of Christ. And wake up early. Let there be the prayer model and a purposeful move. Don't be stagnant. I'm saved. Move on. I'm sanctified. Move on. I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. Move on. I've evangelized this community. Move on. I reached that locality. Move on. I achieved this. Move on. I've gone through that, move on, follow Christ. The move of Christ. Purposeful move. Don't just move anyhow, anywhere. Let there be a purpose, a destiny, a reason. You're following through the purposeful moves of the Master. Now the practical mandate. Let the mandate of Christ be a practical thing in your life. What he did, he preached the gospel. Are you preaching the gospel? He taught others. Are you teaching others? He enlightened those who are in darkness. Are you enlightening somebody? He touched people's lives. Are you touching people's lives? He transformed people's lives. Are you transforming people's lives? Are you following the practical mandate from the master? Preaching, teaching, helping, counseling, 
enlightening, opening the minds of the people, opening the scriptures unto them, touching their lives, leading them to repentance, leading them to a transformed life. Do it like Christ did it. No discrimination. Do it like Jesus did it. No fear. Do it like Jesus did it. No discouragement. Do it like Jesus did it. At a difficult time, even in dangerous places, you know that your life is secured. The life is seed with Christ in God. Follow his practical mandate. There must be something you take out of the Bible study today. And then you give a practical, practical demonstration of that which you have learned. So that you'll do it like they did it in gospel days. They had responsive ministry as they benefited from Christ's healing power or Christ's saving power. If you have not been saved, give your life to Christ. Very simple. Just say, Lord, I turn away from my sin, I turn away from my evil, I turn away. From my transgression, I look up to you for forgiveness. And I know you will not reject me. You have said, whosoever shall call on your name, you will not in any wise cast out. I call upon you, forgive me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Wash all my sins away. Count it down. Count it down. And now you will respond in faith. I will now live a new life. I will now live a transformed life. I will now live a changed life in response of my faith in Christ. A believer, promise the Lord, you will serve Him without reservation. You will serve Him without retreat, without going back. You'll serve him without any inhibition and without any fear. You'll keep on serving the Lord. Reciprocate. Give back to God of your time. Of your talent. Of your skill. Of your knowledge of your strength give back to God because of what he has done for you respond positively respond purposefully respond practically in Jesus name we pray and the responsive people of God said, Raise up your hands. May the Lord anoint all your hands. May something good happen through your hands. That hand on your wife will do something good. On your husband will do something good. On the head of your children will transform their brain. On your market and what you sell will bring prosperity. Your hand will not be misused in any way. And that hand will bring blessing upon yourself and your neighbors. And when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Do you believe that? I said, do you believe that? Say amen to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your people. We thank you for the joy of learning at the Bible study today. We thank you, Lord, for every brother and every sister. 
we pray lord all the words you have proclaimed will be fulfilled in every life in jesus name any fever any time of fever and any disease and any pain any plague anywhere by your mighty power take them away in jesus name you've given us you've shown us the prophecy of healing the promise of healing and the power for healing oh lord you said by your stripes were healed i pray for everyone hearing the sound of my voice Heal them in Jesus' name. You have revealed to us the plurality of healing. Every area we need healing in our soul, in our mind, in our brain, in our nerves, in our flesh, in our bones, in our, in our spirit, in our family, anywhere we need healing. Oh Lord, nobody will go away empty-handed. Heal your people in Jesus' name. And Lord, you have also you have assured us that what we receive freely, we can give to others freely. As your people go and they see people in need and people in any problem, oh Lord, I pray you will solve problems through every one of us in Jesus' name. You remove mountains through every one of us in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray the model you have given us of prayer, give us the strength to pray remind us at the time to pray and lord we pray you help us to make use of this model and follow christ and you'll teach us how to pray effectually effectively in jesus name as we move us through life we will not move purposelessly we will not go around purposelessly our life will fulfill destiny the life of every brother, the life of every sister, every boy, every girl will fulfill destiny in Jesus' name. And the mandate you have given us will not drop it on the ground. We will carry it out. We will touch other people's lives. We will do good in this life. Our community will change because of us. And people are going to get saved because of us use your people use your people use your people let not satan use them let not evil spirit use them let not evil people use them use your people in jesus name and i pray you record many rewards against their name you reward them in this life and you reward them in the life to come. I pray, Lord, will not be forgetful hearers, will be doers of the word. And your blessings will abound and multiply in every life. Once again, anoint their hands, anoint their tongue, anoint their ears, anoint their eyes they will do good. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray.